It's 30 for 30. We're previewing the Illinois at Ohio State game on Saturday. Uh, we've got Adam Jardy from the Columbus Dispatch here to join us. He's uh, the foremost expert on Ohio State basketball, and he's got some great insight into the Buckeyes. Also has a great story on uh, former Illinois Mr. Basketball, EJ Liddell, up today, which I thought was great. Tell me a little bit about that story, first of all, before we get started, Adam. Uh, well, well, first off, thanks for the kind words. That's, that, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I wrote a story today um, about EJ Liddell um, becoming friends with a, a kid from um, his where he grew up, basically. A um, kid that had just had a really hard time, had lost um, uh, two grandparents um, in a short span of time, and also his father had a, an accident working at a quarry. And I was just was going through a hard time, um, but he's an Ohio State fan. His aunt took him to a Belleville West uh, high school game, and they met EJ, and he was super nice to them. And it's just started this relationship where now, uh, he's actually going to be at the at the game here on Saturday. So a huge EJ Liddell fan, really sweet family, and uh, just a real real fun story to tell. Yeah, EJ Liddell is really a, a great kid. I mean, yeah. just following him through his high school career. Obviously, I wish he was wearing orange and blue. Um, it'd be more fun to follow him. But you know, but he's a he's a great kid, and he, he you know he's uh, he's had a fantastic year. Now I know that a lot of Illinois fans loved EJ EJ Liddell growing up, but. He doesn't seem to like Illinois because he always saves his best for the Illinois game. It seems like. I mean, the last time he just lit him up. Uh, is there is there something there that under the surface that we don't know about? He's downplayed it. I mean, every time that it's been asked, because you're right, he has had uh, quite. He's had his. He's had some pretty good performances against Illinois, to say the least. Uh, especially the, this one this season here, where he really kind of announced himself there on the national stage. Um, now, there's there's as far as I know, there's no like deep seated resentment for Illinois or anything. I mean it. Obviously, that you know, it came down to Illinois, Ohio State, and I believe it was Missouri were the three schools that he was looking at. And um, you know, he ends up he had a really great relationship with, with Chris Holtman and the coaching staff. But um, I've actually wondered the same thing. Like he seems to hate. Rut- I I posed this to my readers the one day. I said, Does DJ Liddell love Rutgers or hate Rutgers? Because he just <laughs> like balls out on them on them every time he plays them. And so um, uh, Illinois is in that same vein for him. I, I don't know why. Yeah, he's he's such an he's pretty much an easygoing kid too. I mean, you know, yeah. just he doesn't show his emotions out there. He just against Illinois last time he had what uh, four threes, which I think it, I mean I don't think he's come anywhere close to that in any other game. So no. um, it's 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 definitely an in- interesting thing. I'm sure Illinois is hoping that he forgets that he doesn't like them now, so or, or something <laughs> for tomorrow. So. Um, the Buckeye team, obviously, great year for them. I, I think it's been a maybe a bit of a surprise how good they actually are. I mean, I thought they'd be good. I mean, I figured they were an NCAA tournament team, maybe a top twenty-five team, but they're they're ranked seventh in the country. Um, and, and you know, but the weird part about it is they're ranked seventh in the country. They're currently fifth in the Big Ten, which is a yeah. real because of that unbalanced schedule and things like that is obviously part of that. But they've kind of had they've hit some hard times through these last three games, losing three straight. What's been the kind of the the issue for them in the last three? Well, in the last two, the issue has been their offense. Um, this is a team that the offense has carried it throughout the season. Even when they were allowing teams to score, you know, 80 points in them, they'd still score 85 and find a way to win. That's not been the case these last two games. They only had 67 in the loss at Michigan State, and then they followed that up three days later and only scored 57 in the home loss to Iowa. And, I mean, we all watch the Big Ten. We know what Iowa's defense is. If there's a team you're going to only score 57 on, it's probably it probably ain't going to be Iowa. <laughs> so that was – that was certainly a, a cause for concern. Um, I don't think that this three-game slide is like indicative of uh, a team that peaked too soon or or a team that they can't play at the level it was playing at just a, a week and a half ago. Uh, you know, you, when you look at them individually, you you played a Michigan team that is unanimously regarded as one of the three favorites to win the national championship, and you played them in an all-time game. You come up a little bit short at the end, uh, and then you go to Michigan State and you're playing without Kyle Young, who had a concussion. And that's a huge loss for this team. And you go there, you, you played a desperate team. Michigan State was playing really well in that moment. And you come up, you know, just a little short, four-point loss. It was a two-point game with 10 seconds left. You missed a shot. Um, then you come home and, and you get run off the floor by Iowa. And I thought they looked tired in that game. I thought that there was some, you know, maybe some mental hangover uh, from the Michigan State game. But I feel like those are things that I don't know how much any of that really impacts this game here on Saturday against Illinois. I, I think they got to make shots early. Uh, because then I think maybe, you know, some of the mental game kicks in and you start to worry. Um, but I'm not too I – don't, I don't think that this is some sign that they're going to go on some huge slide and they're, you know, a favorite to get upset once we get to March March Madness. We're in March. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I think the one thing about them is it's, int- it's been a tough schedule. I mean, obviously, these last three games are – Iowa also yeah. was in the mix for a one or two seat. 
I mean, right. you got, and Michigan, right. who is the one seed. So you're, it's not like you're playing, you know, weak teams. You're playing some really good teams. And Michigan State's very desperate. Illinois saw that as well. Michigan State's right. desperate, and and they ran into that. Now, from an outsider, I got to ask you a question about the Illinois Michigan game. Were you kind of shocked by the way that played out after what we've seen this year from Michigan? Is there an adjective stronger than shocked? <laughs> I mean, and I mean, the, every everything about that game. You're talking about, you know, Michigan team that had just cruised since it comes back from a COVID pause. Uh, with the exception of maybe the first 15 minutes against Wisconsin. Like, they just they, – they looked unbeatable. Um, and then you're taking an Illinois team playing without Io. And, I mean, we see teams rise up when a guy goes down with an injury. That happens all the time in sports. But um, to think that – I mean, to, I, I don't have words for, for what that game was. I mean, that was just I, – I was – I came away just unbelievably impressed with, with Iowa and – the maturity of this team and the, the upper level talent of this team to, to lose a player who is, you know, the runner up for big 10 player of the year and to not miss a beat, to go to Michigan and win like that. Um, that's, that's right up there with the biggest wins of the season for me, just from a, a what the heck just happened. Uh, yeah. Standpoint. Yeah. I even thought, you know, it's a huge win. If I did play. <laughs> sure. Oh yeah, and absolutely. So, so when he doesn't yeah. play and not only do you win, you win by 23. I, I'm just, it, we were just, as I watched it and I'm following it and writing about it, I'm just like, did this really happen? I mean, you just, you kind of wonder, yeah. what, did yeah. that really happen? And so, yeah, that, that's one of the, that's one of those games where it's like, as you're writing it, you keep expecting there's a run coming <laughs> yeah. and, and you're like, I'm okay. I need to hold off on what I think this game is because surely Michigan's going to make a run. And then it just never came. Never happened. Yeah. Adam Jardy, Columbus Dispatch here, joining us on Sturdy for 30, previewing the Ohio State game uh, tomorrow. Um, the Buckeyes, obviously, you know, as we mentioned, really good. Is the, If the concern probably for them, I think, going forward is the defensive end. They obviously yes. can score. And even if they had a couple bad games offensively, their concern going forward is probably on the defensive end. What has been their issue defensively? I, I think, to me, the biggest thing with, with the Ohio State defense is they just don't have the size. And they've masked it. They've done – I mean, I, I think they realized pretty early on that this is a team that was going to have to lean into the offense a little bit and, and rely on that to, to win you games as opposed to just locking teams down. Because, one, they don't, they don't have elite defenders. I think they have, they have athletic guys and they have capable defenders, but you don't have like a really – you might have one shutdown defender in, in C.J. Walker, their point guard. Other than that, you have a lot of guys who can play defense, but they're best as a, as a collective. They're not really good individually. And they just don't have that size down low. I mean, we talk about how, how much fun it is to watch E.J. Liddell and how much you know we enjoy him and the impact he's had this season. I think he's 6'7". Um, yeah, E.J. 6'7". Kyle Young is 6'8". And, that, I mean, those are their two primary post guys. Uh, uh, Zed Key, a freshman, he's 6'8", 245. But, I mean, still, you, you think about going against a Hunter Dickinson and a Kofi Coburn, um, you start going down the list in the Big Ten, uh, they don't have those big bodies. And I think that that puts a ceiling on how good you can be defensively. Um, and there's just, you, you, know, this, you, you, can't, you can't coach size. You can't coach height. Um, they've, they've been able to overcome it. Um, but then you see a Hunter Dickinson, a Luca Garza, um, but some of those guys have a lot of success in them recently. That's the biggest thing to me about this team. Is there a, so as we, you know, look at Ohio State um, as a team, they've, they've, even though they lost three in a row, they've got some really good wins. I mean, they're, they're right up there with Illinois in quad one wins, uh, mm -hmm. two of the top teams in the country in quad one wins. When they win, is there, is there a key when you look at Ohio State, is there a key to their success as they go forward? I, I think the key is getting contributions across the board because uh, EJ Liddell will rise up and go off for 26, and Dwayne Washington will, will rise up and go off for 30 like he did in the loss to Michigan. But when they've really been dangerous, it's when they get a lot of contributions from a lot of guys. And it's that whole saying of the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts or however that goes. I always, I always mix it up. But, um, you know, like, like for a while there, I mean, as I look back on the, the first game against them, you know, they are against Illinois. You know, Ohio State got 11 points off the bench from Seth Towns, and he was pivotal in that game. And Justin Arms hit three three-pointers in the second half there. He gave them 11. Um, you know, Zed Key had eight points off the bench. When they when they have all those guys contributing, it just makes them so much more dangerous. You know, you can't double EJ Liddell. You can't, uh, you know, just focus on shutting down Dwayne Washington. Um, and they've not – they haven't had that as much recently. Um, so I think that's been a big factor. And I think like all teams, you know, when shots go in, you look better. They've not shot well recently these last two games. But, again, I thought fatigue was a little bit of a factor. Um, 
They're, they're, I think, like nine for 33 from three in the last two. And they're not getting to the line as much in these last two games. And when they do, they weren't making as many. So just a lot of numbers across the board have been down in these last two games. Um, and I think all of it comes back to just needing that balance from a lot of guys contributing at a, at a pretty high level. Yeah, it makes your team so much more difficult to defend when you have multiple guys scoring. I think Illinois has had that too sometimes. You yes. know, Iowa, yes. I think, had 36 against Missouri, but they lost because nobody else stepped up. So right. these are the, it makes a lot of sense that it, you, that balance is is key for them. So as I, as I look at the game tomorrow, it seems like, you know, Illinois obviously won 10 of 11. They're playing well. They just beat Michigan. Um, you know, they finally you – know, they've had – during that stretch, they had – I think it was four games in eight days. So it's really a tight, tight window there as they, they played. Now they had a couple of days off. It looks like they're going to get DeSumo back. Um, what do you think? What do you expect from the Illini? I mean, I guess I'm the Illini guy, but what, from the outside, what do you guys uh, think you'll see tomorrow? Well, the, there's, there's the part of me that wonders when you're, when you're coming off like a borderline historic performance like they had against Michigan, I think there's a part of you that just wonders, okay, are they going to fall back a little bit? Like, you know, it all kind of balances out over the course of a season. Um, so, you know, I don't think that – I would be shocked if Illinois comes out with a 23-point win in Columbus on Saturday. Like, I just don't see that happening. Um, I'm interested to see how, uh, like, the, the battle with, with Kofi and Ohio State's bigs because for whatever reason, they were able to really get the better of him a lot in that, in that first matchup. And I kept, I kept thinking he was going to take over at some point, and he never really did. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting to see a better version of him. What does Io look like? I mean, I know it's not a long layoff, but it's a little bit of a layoff. Does he show any signs of rust or any signs of, um, you know, just trying to get back? And, you know, maybe sometimes a, a guy tries to do too much. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested to see how some of those guys handle it. And then, you know, a guy that, you know, might have, you know, played 20 minutes when he normally only plays five, like does he get antsy when he gets in there this time and, and try to force a few things because his minutes are cut? Um, I, it's a really interesting uh, puzzle to try to fit back together um, in, in one game like this before the end of the season. So I'm, I'm really interested to see what Illinois does look like. Yeah, I think from Illinois' standpoint, as we kind of look forward to the NCAA tournament, this game's a, for them, I, they feel like if they win this game, that should lock up a one seed in the NCAA sure. tournament with the wins over, you know, with quad one wins, wins oh, yeah. over Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa. Um and so they feel really good if they can win this game. For Ohio State, what do they think they need to do to maybe get to that one line at this point? Um, kind of Because they're going to have to leapfrog some teams to get there. Well, win this game would be a start. I think if, if they don't win this game, they, they, they have no chance. Um, but then, I mean, if, if they win this game, and sorry, my little guy just got home from school. Yeah. Um, if, you, uh, if you win That's this good. game, it gives, it gives you a chance. Hey, buddy. We're family <laughs> friendly, so it's all good. <laughs> um if, if they win, it gives them a chance, and then you go in a Big Ten tournament, and you're going to have a number of opportunities there. I mean, I think if Ohio State were to win on Saturday and then make, uh, you know, make it to Saturday, make it to Sunday, uh, they have a legitimate chance. I mean, to get to Sunday, they, they probably have. I mean, to get to Sunday, they'd have to beat a Michigan, um, an Iowa, an Illinois, somebody like that. So um, it would be tough, um, but it's certainly in the realm of possibilities because they do have a big body of work. There. Yeah, definitely. With the number of quad one wins both these teams have, I, I think, and, you know, playing in the – this is one of those conferences that it's legendary right now. I mean, yeah. historically strong, um, yeah. the Big Ten this year. So um, so I think you, you get a little run and you're going to be successful. So, yeah. well, I, I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow. I'm really excited. What, what do you – what do you have a prediction? Um, I'm always bad at these. Um, I, I'm – I'm – Given how Illinois has played recently and how Ohio State has played recently, I think you would have to expect Illinois to come out with a close win. But I think I also could very easily see a scenario where Ohio State comes out, hits some shots early, and all the good vibes come back, and they and they end up winning, I don't know, by seven or eight points. Um, I don't know which of those two I think is going to happen. I honestly, I'm, that's why I'm so excited for this game because I just I, I have no good feel for what we're going to see. Yeah, I think it's tough when you don't even know necessarily what to expect from the Illinois roster, first of all, Io. And and then also coming off a what is an amazing win, can you replicate that kind of defense? I thought and yeah. I thought their defense was against Michigan. Yeah, Michigan missed some shots, but man, they they Thanks. limited their their yes. ability to do things. I mean, they really made it tough on them. And so Yeah. Yeah, and and I'm interested. I mean, Ohio State's a team that this is the first adversity it's faced all year. Whenever they've had in-game adversity or if they've had a loss, they've bounced back. 
uh, until this last week here. There's a lot of pride on this team, and they've been through a lot of battles, um, you know, not just this season, but the, they have guys that have been around college basketball a long time, and it would make you expect that they would have, you know, some sort of answer in them on, on in a game like this. Yep, no, I agree. I think it's uh, it's going to be an interesting game. Very intriguing matchup. It's going to be uh, 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern, I guess. Weird time, but a prime time, I guess, you know, for, for Saturday afternoon sports. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, we're very excited about it. Adam, I appreciate you joining us here uh, on Sturdy for 30. And uh, again, take a Illinois fans, take a check out to his story on EJ Liddell. EJ is a, uh, a kid. I, I know that Illinois fans don't don't like EJ Liddell because he went to Ohio State. That, that's OK. But th- this might give you a little bit of better perspective on what EJ is like as a person. And also then when if he does go off tomorrow, you won't hate him quite as bad. So there you go. Yeah, there you so, go. So, Just do my part. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for coming on, Adam. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it's always good to talk to you. I always love reading your stuff and following you on Twitter. So thanks for having me. Thanks, man.